In January 2016, the then Home Secretary Theresa May committed the government to what she described as widespread and ambitious measures to ensure collaboration between the emergency services. Some fire services had already reached out to other blue light services, as Claire Forrester reports now from Manchester. With the number of fires reducing dramatically over the last decade, locally-led cooperation across blue light services can benefit everyone, providing extra support for frontline staff, investment in fire prevention programmes and allowing for faster response times when incidents do happen, saving lives and taxpayers money. It's been particularly effective across Greater Manchester with cardiac arrests. There are fire stations and fire crews around Greater Manchester who we've equipped over the years and trained uh, to use automatic defibrillators. It's common sense that we should mobilise them to these cases. To have a fire crew available that can get there as soon as they possibly can, with us, alongside us, is the key. And there's been some real successes around Greater Manchester in that work. So the collaborative work that we've been doing over the years has led to a real response potential and benefit to the public. Public events like this emergency services 999 day in Manchester clearly show the police, the ambulance and the fire and rescue services working together and behind the scenes they're continually collaborating to reduce preventable fires and accidents and thereby relieve the pressure on the NHS and local authorities. The government has invested over £80 million in joint blue light projects like the community risk intervention teams in the North West. Known as CRITS, this pilot scheme saw firefighters working with the police and ambulance service to help reduce the risk of falls and accidents among the elderly and vulnerable. Our days were very varied, so we may be asked to return to a medical in, uh, emergency such as a cardiac arrest. Uh, we may be asked to go and attend a concern for welfare for a vulnerable person on behalf of Greater Manchester Police or we may be fitting risk reduction equipment for vulnerable members of the public who are at risk of slip trips or falls. Uh, we may also be carrying out our prevention work such as safe and well visits. Greater Manchester Fire and Rescue Services say that in the first six months of the CRITS project, when only three teams were involved, they added more than £13 million of value at a cost of less than £800,000. The CRITS teams are now being disbanded and training is being given to carry out their role on a much larger scale throughout the whole fire service. And there's more working together planned. One of the huge benefits that we're seeing from Safe and Well is local authorities are actually looking at that, seeing the benefit that actually arises from it. And previously they've been really, really nervous about sharing data about people who are vulnerable. But we're now starting to see some of those barriers actually come down. And people are a lot more willing now to, to at least have a conversation about what information they might actually share with us. Where that takes us to is we start to get very targeted about who we, who we deliver that intervention for. So that then should actually reap even more benefits. Getting the data protection balance right is of course vital for successful teamwork between the emergency services, local authorities and health and social care providers. But in the meantime, Greater Manchester Emergency Services are continuing to trial exciting new projects together. For example, firefighters are now being trained to administer adrenaline for anaphylactic shock and adopting this approach could see them eventually being able to give flu and other jabs during a home safety check.